Greetings. I would like to welcome you to our daily weekday Mass, held here at the National Shrine of St. Therese on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois. The Carmelites cherish praying and celebrating with you. This shrine is the blessing of a generous gift from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation. Good morning, everyone, <clears throat> and welcome to the National Shrine of St. Therese. We begin our celebration today by blessing ourselves in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. Coming into the Lord's presence, we ask for forgiveness and healing especially for the times when we doubted God's love and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you invite us to conversion. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you lead us to the joy of the resurrection. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you judge us with compassion and mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, perseverance in, obe in obeying your will that in our days the people dedicated to your service may grow in both merit and number. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Numbers. From the Mount of Or, the children of Israel set out on the Red Sea Road to bypass the land of Edom. But with their patience worn out by the journey, the people complained against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up from Egypt to die in this desert where there is no food or water? We are disgusted with this wretch food. In the punishment, the Lord sent among the people seraph serpents, which beat the people so that many of them died. Then the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned in complaining against the Lord and you. Pray the Lord to take the serpents away from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a syrup and mount it on a pole. And whoever looks at it after being beaten will live. Moses, accordingly, made a bronze serpent and mounted it on the pole. And whenever anyone who had been beaten by a serpent looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. The word of the Lord. O oh Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. My prayer and let my cry come to you. O Lord, 
Hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. Hide not your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me in the day when I call. Answer me speedily. Let my cry come to you. The nation shall revere your name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. When the Lord has rebuilt Zion and appeared in his glory, when he has regarded the prayer of the destitute and not despised their prayer. Let this be written for the generations to come, and let his future creatures praise the Lord. The Lord looked down from his holy height. From heaven he beheld the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoners to release those doomed to die. And let my cry come to you. Glory and, pray and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The seed is the word of God, Christ is the sower. All who come to him will live forever. Praise and glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Pharisees, I'm going away and you will look for me, but you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said, he is not going to kill himself, is he? Because he said, where I am going, you cannot come. He said to them, you belong to what is below, I belong to what is above. You belong to this world, but I do not belong to this world. That is why I told you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. So they said to him, who are you? Jesus said to them, but I told you from the beginning, I have much to say about you in condemnation. But the one who sent me is true. And what I heard from him, I tell the world. They did not realize that he was speaking to them of the Father. So Jesus said to them, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am, and that I do nothing on my own. But I say only what the Father taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone because I always do what is pleasing to him. Because he spoke this way, many people came to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends in Christ, throughout this week and next week, we will hear the stories of death and doom, only to have God, God's intervention bring life, even the promise of new and everlasting life. So this week, let us go on the journey through the valley of darkness and of death, and then into life. You know, human history is written with blood. We kill each other, exploit each other, enslave and torture and destroy. 
And this doesn't just happen in the Ukraine and in Russia. In some of the places in Africa where there's so much violence in the Mideast, it happens in our own country, in our large cities, in the small cities. Death is there every day. It seems so cheap. All you have to do is take a gun and pull the trigger. It has been like this from almost from the beginning. So on top of that, we have the ability to eradicate our entire species and everything in this world by simply pushing a button. And we don't have the wisdom to ensure each other that it doesn't have to be this way. And why do we do it? Pope Francis has written time and time again, how we destroy the planet, this earth that God has given to us. And all for what? For the idols that we hold. Make enough money, do whatever you want. Everything seems to be at us as long as I get what I want. This week's readings make me aware of God's frustration with us. And it is a holy frustration in some sense to end all others. Maybe we don't deserve to be saved. Do you ever think about that? Fortunately, grace isn't about deserving. God never gives up on us after all we have done to deserve it. And if God will not give up on us, then I won't either. This land, maybe we need to look to hope, to be a sign of hope for others. And that is by showing our trust and confidence in the Lord that we're not alone. St. Therese is the most beautiful example of that. She went through so much pain and suffering, but she never gave up on the Lord, and neither can you and I. The next two weeks, we hear again and again of what Jesus has done for us. It is on the cross that we will see him giving us forgiveness, and healing, and it is offered to everyone, no exception. But we see on this cross God's solution to our rebellion. God refuses to give up on us. And when we look closer, when we look at the eyes of Jesus, we see not only sadness, but we see unconditional love. We can see his arms outstretched in mercy towards all of us as we look at the Lord with outstretched arms on the cross. He embraces us. He waits for us. He is always there. And he lets us know that he has come to do his Father's will. Obedience, it's a word that we find difficult to practice in our everyday life. Uplifted in obedience to the Father, as we look at the cross, there is no limit to God's compassion and his forgiveness. And so, if we linger a little bit longer, perhaps we will recognize that what Jesus did is beyond punishment, suffering, and sin, it is even beyond forgiveness. We will see that death is not the ultimate end. And as Jesus dies and rises again, he invites us in communion with him to rise not only to life, but to eternal life, the greatest gift of all. So what I suggest between now and Easter, to take some moments, maybe it's only one moment,
to sit or to stand or to kneel and to look at the cross. And in the silence of your heart, we don't need to speak any words. Look at the eyes of Jesus. What is he saying to you and me? The first thing he says is, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. Jesus is talking about me. He's talking about you. Forgive. Love, ultimate love, mercy, not judgment. Sometimes we take the very symbols that we wear and that we have in our homes for granted. Or maybe let us make a conscious effort during these next two weeks to look at that and say, Lord, here I am. Help me to understand the tremendous love and forgiveness that keeps pouring out and that I am the recipient as is everybody else. And help me to respond in kind to the love and the forgiveness and the mercy that you share with me and that Jesus asks to share on the part of all of us with each other. That's the only way we are going to understand this ne these next two weeks. When we listen, and you were very much like, this, like the, the Israelites in the desert, but disappointed or grumble about when things don't go right. We're right there with them, each and every one of them. And yet, what is the response on the part of the Lord? Forgive them, Father for they do not know what they're doing. Can we do that with one person? Can we do it with many persons? We will rise with the Lord to the degree that we can share those gifts with each other. The Lord God is our help who never abandons us and assured of the steadfast love we bring our needs and the needs of the whole world to him. Today we pray for the church as we enter more fully into the mystery of Christ's death and rising from the dead and involved bringing us to the Lord as he offered himself to the Lord. For this we pray to the Lord. For the world, that the power of Christ crucified may lead lands torn apart by violence to make a commitment to justice and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord For all those who are weary, weighed down by the burdens of life, that they may experience the Easter joy that Jesus promises to each of us, we pray to the Lord. For those who have failed in their Lenten promises, begin again and trust in God's mercy and realize that God's grace is given to everyone. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for all the members of the Little Flower Society and the Infant of Prague and their intentions and all those who continue to support us in our everyday life and are a sign of hope for us. For them we pray to the Lord. Lord we remember today Aurora Tuwasen and also Carmelite sister Monica Terrace and all of our loved ones that the Lord may continue to give them the promise that he gives to all of us eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord and so gracious and loving God, Help us in our weakness to put our eyes on the cross and help us realize that you embrace each and every one of us, no matter what we have done. 
because we are your beloved children. And we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. They will become for us our spiritual food and drink. And now let us pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, that being moved to compassion, you may both pardon our offenses and direct our wavering hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another to your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts of, bre of bread and wine, whose, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son. For when about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself gave himself into, his ha into your hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son and in the saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church 
a sign of unity <clears throat> and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Ronald our Bishop and the entire people. <clears throat> Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your son, so also bring us together with the most glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, our faithful spouse, Saint Therese, Blessed Titus Pransma, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in the one, in the new heaven and the new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. <clears throat> and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with each one of you. Amen. And now let us reach out and share the peace of Christ with one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter unto my roof only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. 
Testaments. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Of Christ. The body 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 of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all to myself, says the Lord. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that ever seeking what is divine, we may always be worthy to approach these heavenly gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Bow your heads now and pray for God's blessing. O God, who choose to show mercy, not anger, to those who hope in you. Grant that your faithful may weep as they should for the evil they have done, and so merit the grace of your consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We greet Mary. Hail Mary full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Mount Carmel, St. Therese, I want to remind you that it is coming Friday. We have the Stations of the Cross, which will be on the other side of the spiritual center, beginning at 10 o'clock. And then we have Mass here at 11.30. Have a wonderful day. God bless.